The West has fallen. And now we stand alone, surrounded by enemies. The mission is clear. Freeing lost land and most importantly, reconquering Italy and the Eternal City. Welcome to the Eastern Roman Empire, 476 AD. After saving the West, civilizing the Huns, walking to Rome, video still in progress, defending Britannia and fighting for Rome in a different universe, it's now time to save the Eastern Roman Empire. A task only made for real men, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, let's get into it. As the Eastern Roman Empire, we are now caught in the romano etherian Wars. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. A new struggle mechanic between the Romans <laughs> and the Sassanids, symbolizing the endless war between Rome and its eastern neighbors. And so, in this campaign, it's my goal to end and win the struggle against the Sassanids and additionally reconquering Italy and most of the fallen west. I also want to protect the remaining Roman areas, like Sosois or Illyria. Playing Rome also comes with the task of dealing with the imperial laws, although it's way easier to handle them for the east than for the west. And meanwhile, I can see if the law is failing or not, so nothing compared to the challenge I had with the Western Roman Empire. Because back then I could only hope and pray that the bar goes up. But of course, I cannot just completely ignore them, they are also important here. And so I enlarged the army first. Doggies, yeah. Please make. I wanna have some war dogs in my army, they are so cute, look at them. <laughs> in the following I made sure to have a good relation with all my powerful vassals and I also allied myself with the last independent Roman generals so I could protect them if they were attacked. Another new thing I most care about is the senate and this is where you guys come in. Through your comments you can influence the campaign like last time and lead the empire to glory or destroy everything but I won't recommend that guys okay so thanks. So far so good. Before thinking of expansion or any sort of conquest, I wanted to make sure that the imperial laws are all protected. Which is why I built farms and buildings and enlarged the army once more. In the next couple years I really focused on the development of the empire. But while my empire had a good time, my Roman allies in the west faced a serious invasion. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Okay. We're, we have to defend the Sosois, they're about to be conquered and actually help them so that the last Romans in the west are not falling. I sent my troops to help as quickly as I could. Unfortunately, my army did not reach their destination fast enough. And while they were still on their way, the last Roman outpost in the west fell into the hands of the barbarians, also known as France. Occasionally, the governor of a province dies, and it's my task to declare a new one. A really cool mechanic if you ask me. Well, at least up to a certain point. Cause once the empire gets too big, it's really really annoying, like it's really not fun anymore. And trust me on this, I know what I'm speaking of, okay? I, I, I have experiences, to say the least. <laughs> There are times, however, where I wouldn't trust me that much. Oh, Italy is fighting against... Oh, Visigoths in Italy are fighting against France. France. French are pretty aggressive. <laughs> oh, that makes sense! Cause Charlemagne the Great, right? Charlemagne was Frankish ruler and then later founded the Holy Roman Empire, right? My empire was well progressing. But my eastern neighbors, the Sassanids, were going through a crisis. Besides other things, they were badly damaged financially through their last wars. So I saw my chance to strike and sent my elite soldiers. Oh my god, I misclicked. Okay. I might win this battle, they say. Dude, I have 800 troops. There is no way I'm winning this. Not with that mindset, my dear. Like, yeah, I'll... Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> they are totally bro 600 against 2000 and they are winning they are winning <laughs> they are spartans how did they, that they makes, it makes no sense bro that's that's free 
They defeated them. Like, I've probably got the best commander in the world here. The attack went way better than I imagined. The Sassanids were literally paraded. And it was more like a public humiliation than a war. My army is going nuts again. Like, they're again defeating a 2k stack with 800 men. <laughs> they are just... Absolutely. Literally, what is your army? In the end, my victory was not a big surprise, but the death of the Emperor Zenon was. His daughter Rachel ascended the throne. Even though it was said that she had a great future ahead of her, I remained skeptical, as she still was a kid. However, there was virtually no unrest after the change of rulers, which really surprised me. This, however, was different in Italy, Bruh. which in the meantime consisted only of individual regions, some of which were even still Roman. Hmm, nice. So the West was also getting more attractive. But first, I had to finish my business with assassinate. The first territories fell fast into my hand. And so, more lands were conquered. For safety reasons, I supported the biggest political faction in the Senate to hold my back. Then enlarging the army with some more war dogs. Look, I have war doggies. I love my war doggies. They're so war cute. doggies? Yeah. Aww. Look at them, they're so cute. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and preparing for the third round against assassinates. And then followed a little rap presentation from my Praetorian guard. Okay. We're going back to broke, as a pants and as a hoe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and motivated by this, <laughs> and motivated by this, the troops started the action. First conquest followed quickly. Already in the first battle, I managed to capture the enemy leader and thus the war was won. Great progress and new lands, as well as weakening the Sassanids were the result. Future glory for my house followed when I announced my wedding. And my husband had drip, like for real, look at him. But he had also interesting habits to say the least. Bro, look at this, that looks hilarious. <laughs> oh, you're sitting there. Bro. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? Um, you could, you could... <laughs> Oh no, man. You can just straight up look under his tunica and he's sitting there like, don't giving a shit at all. He's like, I'm fine with that. Look at my dick, man. <laughs> like, he's presenting it. Like, look at this. <laughs> he's like, if you come in, you're, <laughs> you're straight up face to look at this man. <laughs> he's he's casually showing it. Bro. He's so proud. <laughs> In the period of peace that followed, the empire's infrastructure could really flourish, and I invested heavily in trade and new buildings. Oh my God. All was good, and so I decided for another push into Persia, even adding some additional <laughs> doggies, if you know what I mean. Hope you got it. But since the Sassanids were really no match for me, I decided to take a first step into former western territories. I did this by attacking Sicily and trying to reconquer it from the Vandals. During this war, I even managed to conquer Carthage for a short time. And one decisive battle later, Sicily was captured. Except for a small uprising in the east and my financial problems, everything had gone as planned. But it wasn't something my economy couldn't fix in a few years. While I was fabricating the last claims to win the romano etherian struggle, I pushed once again against the Vandals, reconquering more of the African coastline. Once that was done, I focused on the Sassanid, to crush them once and for all. And since they never really recovered from their early crisis, they had almost no chance against me. In the end, only a small tribe was missing. My legions of course had no difficulties conquering it. And so, I achieved Roman victory and crushed the Sassanid Empire once and for all. A huge success. Every true Roman should be proud on this achievement. Now that all the problems are settled, I decided for another push against the Vandals. However, during this attack, Rachel, the glorious empress, died and the throne went to Sibylla, who had promising military skills. And so, she single-handedly led Rome to victory in this war. Rome is triumphing. 
and more conquests are planned. Most of Europe was shattered and in the east we destroyed the Sassanids and thus the eastern borders were safe. Imperatic Sibylla was a wise and just ruler who was managing the court and the empire with great skill. But her true talent was military warfare. She was determined to retake the lost territories that had been conquered by the barbarian invaders, especially the fallen lands in Italy and the imperial city. Understanding that this was a fitting time for her first step, she dared to first advance to Italy, something highly recommended by many in the Senate. And the campaign went well. In the East, however, some borders could lead to serious problems or invasions in the future and so I decided to wage some wars and to use these mountains... Wait, what, what's the name of these mountains? Whatever. These mountains in the Eastern North could function very well as a natural border and so I made sure to be in full control of these mountain regions. While strengthening my position at the court, I also focused on further strengthening the economy of the empire. Further wars in Italy followed. Even though the barbarians made up a good fight, the legions were unstoppable. Leading the army from the front lines, they slowly conquered their way in the direction of the eternal city. Ending the campaign with the reconquest of Capua. And motivated by this success, she ordered the reconquest of Carthage and the general African province a proposal which was very popular in the Senate. The war went well, at least for a while, cause threatened by our advance in Italy, the barbarians controlling the Eternal City decided to go into the offense. And by the way, what is that supposed to mean? The barbarians were aiming for Sicily, as the island was the strategic center for all the recent military advances and operations. Now I had no time to waste. I took my whole army and laid siege to Carthage. After several months, the city eventually fell and I could reconquer the African province. But there was not much time to celebrate, as I directly ordered to defend Italy against the barbaric hordes. Some sieges followed, but after an important victory in Syracuse, I decided to march on the internal city itself. Unfortunately, not to free it, but to conquer it. And after finally breaking down the Aurelian walls, the city was ours and the war was won. But immediately afterwards, I received messages about another invasion at the borders of Dacia, which required my attention. So I quickly sent my forces in the north. Instead of fighting the enemy armies, I just conquered all their land and destroyed their cities. So they were forced to surrender in the end. So I had a little time to manage my court. But not for long, as the barbarians I just defeated attacked me again. This time with an even larger force. This could have been an epic fight right here, but I was not paying attention for a moment and accidentally gave them access. And if you think that they could cause problems, well, I just handed them over to a vassal Bye, and actually never saw them again, so easy as that. <laughs> So now I had time to focus on the eastern border project. I started earlier. And so, a bit by bit, I conquered the remaining regions along the Caspian Sea and of the Georgian Mountains. And so I created a beautiful border. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. The Eternal City was still not reconquered. But Sibylla desperately wanted this achievement and so she marched towards Rome and their defenders. After smashing the barbarians near Capua, something magical happened. The city rebelled against their occupiers and thus the war was won in a way that would make every true Roman proud. Through this achievement, I had tons of new available decisions. For example, to restore the Praetorian Guard. Why are you running? The empire was flourished with joy. Under the leadership of Silvia, the Roman Empire would once again rise to greatness. Some minor wars in Africa and Persia followed, but overall, the Romans were enjoying the moment. But while 
the Roman armies were fighting in Persia, peasants in the Eternal City revolted. And so the first legion was born to secure its safety. But what really made the legion admirable were the war dogs it contained. And since it was Sibylla, she couldn't just stop waging wars. And so she challenged the Vandals again and conquered new territory, beginning to secure the Mediterranean, then taking revenge on the remaining northern tribes who once immigrated and invaded us. Unfortunately, these new lands were not at all profitable and they were extremely underdeveloped and I had to spend a lot of gold to develop and feudalize them. Ambitious as she was, she launched another large-scale invasion on Britannia. Britannia? Uh, Italy, what the fuck? Ambitious as she was, she launched another large-scale invasion on Italy, but was attacked by other tribes as they saw this as a huge chance for them to weaken the Roman Empire. And it was indeed a great play. Nevertheless, the war in Italy made good progress and new territories were conquered. Sibylla had her own statue erected in Rome to remember her greatness. Victories followed until that one day occurred. The day on which Sibylla the Great died. A strong woman remembering me on the great conquests of Octavius in the different universe. Shout out to all of you who know this guy. Alexandros II now ascended the throne with the task of ending all the ongoing wars while keeping the empire stable. First, he drove back the invaders from the north and then directly fought the wars in Italy and won one war after another. Unfortunately, Corsica managed to defeat us and in return for our loss, we had to pay 19,750 gold, which bankrupted the empire immediately. And so Alexandros avoided wars or spending money at all costs. During this piece, he dealt with the Hellenic culture and the suggestion from the Senate to rework it and diverge from the Hellenic to the Greco-Roman culture instead, as this was much more suited, especially now that we hold large parts of Italy and thus a Roman population. Over time, the empire managed to recover from its financial crisis, and in the year 591 AD, Alexandrus could finalize his plan and idea, and so the Greco-Roman divorce happened. The emperor died not long after fulfilling his mission and so his 13-year-old son rose to power. In the meantime, our Illyrian allies had also conquered their way to Italy. The young emperor wanted to build on his grandmother's success and so he declared war against Sardinia and Vandals. But these wars did not go as planned and so the empire lost again against Sardinia after it had just recovered from its last financial crisis. But it could come even worse if the war against the Vandals were also lost. Now it's up to us to stop this crisis and to lead the empire back in the right direction. Another financial setback like that would be dramatic. Moreover, uprisings threatened to break out all over the empire and so it was on the verge of crumbling. But the victory of Corsica against the Vandals ended the war. Lucky me. Now it was about to regain the favor of my vassals. And look at all these different cultures. A real Roman Empire. <laughs> During this period, I spent most of my time with vassal managing. But our Roman friends in Illyria were facing their end, as their last daughter was married to a barbarian and thus lost her children to his clan and culture. So I offered my guardianship to raise their boy and save the Roman culture in Illyria, but I doubt that it will last for much longer. Generally speaking, the empire was in a good way, despite its financial crisis. But a barbarian horde challenged the rising empire with an invasion, and so the armies were sent to fight them off. And after several battles and sieges, Rome was victorious. Many in the Senate demanded the integration of Illyria in the Roman Empire, but they were too proud. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. A bit of setback for every Roman, slowly my finances recovered and I made sure to strengthen the economy even further. And so I built a new and massive church, the biggest in all of Europe. With these things all settled, I started to regain my power. 
Corsica, on the other hand, had completely lost their newly gained territory and influence. And so there was only one logical thing to do. An invasion to revenge and conquer the islands. This time, however, step by step to secure the success of the campaign. Besides my advances, the Greek language was also spreading like crazy. Imagine speaking Latin in 616 AD. <laughs> Cringe. A short time later, Sardinia was also captured and reintegrated in the empire. Slowly but surely, the pieces moved in our favor. Especially since now the entire Mediterranean was once again under Roman control. I plan to continue the reconquest of Italy, but some nations had insanely strong armies, especially Pisa, and I had to be careful with my next steps. So I decided to advance slowly and carefully. I made rapid progress in the next few days and Mediolanum came closer and closer. And then I dared the war against Pisa. They were a worthy opponent, but not more. And I could claim victory and move towards Ravenna, another city with a big Roman history. The following battle was in my favor until suddenly enemy reinforcements arrived from Pisa oh, fuck. and turned the battle against me. But it was to come even worse, as I suddenly had a much larger opponent in the east. The Islamic invasion had begun. Oh my freaking god. I called out for help to every ally I had. This situation was tricky. And while the Muslims advanced, my troops decided to quickly visit South America. I don't know, just for no reason. And then to continue the fight after that. Thanks, I guess. My legions also lost the second battle in Italy and the result was devastating. Now I was in death again. And on top of that, I had to fight the greatest threat the empire had ever seen since Honorius. <laughs> no way, what? There is no way. Bro. <laughs> there is no way the Muslims are speaking Greek. <laughs> That's... Okay, that is a plot twist. Holy damn. They were like, nah. <laughs> it, is, it shall be Greek. And so it was. Bro, even Africa is speaking Greek. Like, the whole world is speaking Greek. That's pretty cool. You could probably... <laughs> Talk to everyone in Greek, except Spain, they're Latin. They're like, nah, we're not doing this. <laughs> Even Germany. Because of the lack of money, I was fighting with heavy debuffs. So I had basically no chance against a superior army. However, I found a cheesy way to get behind their lines and just went in the offense. And my plan succeeded, luckily, as I'm pretty sure that I would have lost a real fight. But the conflict in the east wasn't over yet, as I also had other enemies there. But while defending against other Persian invaders, the Muslims returned. And so our fight went into the second round. And again, I had to defend multiple borders at once, as barbarians started a migration war. I finished off the Muslims once again with the same strategy and then immediately head off to the north to counter the invasion of the barbaric tribes. However, regardless of how often I won against the Muslims, they always returned even stronger after a couple months. After years of war, I finally managed to negotiate a bit of peace. But this peace lasted suspiciously long and so I found out that a great prophet of the Muslims had died. But their strength and belief was still the same. A wild beast tamed for the moment, but with the danger of breaking free any second. A small war in the east followed, but other than that, it remained quiet. I finally had some money again. And after a while, the current emperor died. And so, Athemius ascended the throne. He immediately continued the reconquest of Italy. And even though the campaign was rough, he almost led Rome to victory. However, he died before that, and so his brother extended the throne. The war was continued and successfully won. After gathering enough prestige, I could revenge the Battle of Carhe. Although, this guy did nothing for his achievement. I mean, I don't know. It is what it is. Take it or leave it. It's unusual not to see 15,000 in a red color. More conquests in Italy followed, and Mediolanum 
was declared the new capital of the province Italy. My vassals next to the Black Sea advanced further into unknown territory and so I decided to restore the kingdom of the Bosporus. As the northern nations were really underdeveloped, I made rapid progress, quickly conquered new lands. Pisa however used the ongoing war in the north to reconquer their lost land. I reacted quickly and was able to win the first battle, so my attention went back to the northern wars. While winning in the north, I lost track of the ongoing war in Italy against Pisa, and so Pisa defeated me once again. I now concentrated on reconquering the last parts of the Bosporus Kingdom. I conquered more and more, until I eventually succeeded. All the lands of the former kingdom were now under Roman control. The empire had overcome its crisis. The first universities were built in Egypt to further increase civic growth. Unfortunately, I can only restore the Bosporus Kingdom officially if I change the culture of the provinces to Hellenic. But whether I do that is a different question for another time. For now, the empire is safe. And that's all what matters. After listening to my subjects, I further increased the development of the infrastructure. Especially the province of Italy really started to flourish. Mainly the imperial city. Mainly the eternal city. Which was a real blessing to see her rise once again. A small province in Greece joined a group of Spanish rebels, but was quickly reintegrated. At the request of the Senate, I made the kingdom of Blemia to a permanent tributary and ordered my steward to max out the development in Constantinople. To make further conquests easier, I integrated the tradition by the sword in our culture. Write in the comments if you know another useful tradition our empire definitely needs. I decided that it was time to reconquer further parts in Italy. During the war against Pisa, Anthemius II ascended the throne due to the death of his father. He ensured that the good traits stayed in the family. You know, incest, wincest. <laughs> the war against Pisa was won. And before continuing with further wars in Italy, I really pushed the development of my provinces. I did this by building new cities or just increasing the level of buildings so that the Roman infrastructure could become what it once was, or even more. Then started the final push on Italy. First conquering Ravenna and Pisa, then destroying the barbarians that settled near the Alps. And so Italy was free from barbarians. My African vassals had conquered some more land, reaching deep in the desert. I mean, I appreciate the effort, but... I was planning to grant this region's independence again, as they were not at all profitable and really useless actually. Well, I built new universities, and since the empire had been stable for the last couple years, I decided to start the revenge against Arabic kingdoms, something heavily demanded by many senators. And so shortly after, the first victory was mine. But this was only the small beginning. In the east, however, the Gupada Empire was about to form India. And not gonna lie, that would be so freaking cool. Like, I never saw that happen. And that would be so cool to see, honestly. I hope they make it. And afterwards, I probably wish I never spoke these words because they'll be freaking strong. Besides, I started with the conversion of the Bosporus Kingdom back to Hellenism which will allow me to officially bring back the original Bosporus Kingdom. In the meantime, the governor of Italy had turned his back on Roman culture. And so I could press Germanic tribes to invade him for me. Which is a really cool feature if you ask me. While the Germans fought for me in Italy, I conquered my way towards Spain in Africa. After succeeding, I decided that it was time to really start the revenge campaign against the Arabic tribes and kingdoms. Several battles followed. Suddenly, Anthemius died and Petros ascended the throne. While managing my realm, I realized something weird. Why the hell am I owning this territory up here? Italy? <laughs> what the hell am I doing in Germany? Bruh. I continued and won the war against several Arabic kingdoms. After that, I granted independence to the first tribe in African territory, as I really don't need more control over desert. I mean, there's literally nothing else.
Hello there. Then, a minor war in the east of Italy followed, and after that I directly continued conquering in Africa. This time, however, mostly to beautify the borders. Valid reason, right? Time passed, and another conquest in Arabia followed. While I was busy in the east, in the west, Gaul had risen back to power, spreading Gallo-Roman culture in the area and also conquered some territories in Spain and Africa. Really cool neighbors. On top of that, they were distant heirs to the Sosois. The campaign in Arabia was rough and Petrus closed his eyes forever during this war. Probably murdered, so his brother and brother-in-law, <laughs> insist we insist, became emperor. Look at this guy's stats. You can't say anything against it. That's the proof it works. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Not much later and the war was won. And already a third of Arabia was mine. Another conquest deeper in former assassinate lands followed. And the victory in this war brought us closer to the Indian Empire. I will just call them Indian Empire as they more or less are the Indian, Indian Empire now. I mean, come on. <laughs> While further campaigning in Arabia, I suddenly received shocking news, to say the least. Okay, now we're fucked. Oh my freaking god! <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, that was unexpected, honestly. I, I didn't expect that at all. Okay, well, a war and uprisings in my own land followed this message. Thankfully, my legions had no problem dealing with the peasants and could quickly join the fight in the east. To make matters worse, the emperor died, making Job, yeah, that's, that's his real name, his successor. Now that's my job. <laughs> I'm so funny, guys, I'm sorry. I first ensured the succession. I think we all know where this is going. Unfortunately, I lost the war against India, as they just overran my lands and conquered my territories. But I managed to win the war in Arabia. At the same time, in the west, more Roman empires popped up. Nice. I decided to build a statue in Constantinople for... Yeah, no valid reason, but... But it's not my job to care. <laughs> okay. Even though we lost against India, the last words were not spoken yet. Without a doubt, the Gubadar Empire was my biggest threat at the moment. Fortunately, the newest Fallen Eagle patch brought with it a few unique and very useful decisions. For example, I could bring back the Western Roman Empire. I don't know why I should do it, but at least now it's revived. Hey, <laughs> let's go! At least. Technically, it's back there. Yeah, I never created the title. Then, I continued by doing Roman things like road building or country development. Yeah, as you do as a Roman, huh? Yeah, I actually wanted to modernize the culture a bit by adding some new traits, but yeah, I don't know. Somehow, someone added something without me noticing it. I don't know, my vassals, my, my court? I don't know. But yeah, there is a new tradition. I don't know, it just appeared, or I'm dumb, I don't know. I'll let you guys decide that for yourself. Actually, I'm not quite sure if that was a good idea. Meanwhile, I had managed to create the perfect hair through my more or less accepted methods. Family creation, <laughs> as I like to say it. I managed the empire and as everything was doing fine, I started campaigning towards Spain. A goal often pointed out by many senators. But after some smaller wars, the way to Spain was blocked by the Morian kingdom. They managed to hold their ground for quite some time. But in the end, my army quality made the difference and I could secure another former Roman province. I finished off the last independent provinces when that happened. Yo, what the hell happened? Yo, 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 wait, 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 what? Are we crusading or something? Why is everyone joining this war? Look. <laughs> Yo, okay. I'm sorry. It would be epic if we would fight against the Gubadar Empire, but 
We're literally fighting against one province. Okay, an empire, but one province. Bro. <laughs> and guess what? I actually won that war. I directly gathered my legions and set sail to reconquer Illyria, which couldn't be considered an ally anymore. The campaign was going well, and I managed to capture several key cities and fortresses. However, the attack was interrupted by an unexpected attack from the Gupater Empire. They not only had caught me off guard, but also threatened with a much larger force. That was until I noticed that my vassals and all the other Christian Romans had joined forces to protect their holy land. With everyone joining the war, it was now a fair fight. Because without combined forces, there was no way of beating the Gubater Empire right now. Bro, my Indian man knows no fear. He's going berserker style. Like who the fuck needs armor if you have a body of steel? All Roman forces slowly arrived. Marching together, we managed to stand our ground and pushed back the attackers with combined strength. By winning one battle after another, we could slowly defeat the Gubater Empire. But to make matters worse, my political enemies used this time to threaten with a civil war. <laughs> a very Roman way of destroying an empire. While keeping things together with the disloyal vassals, my armies went in the offense against India which led to their surrender, and Rome achieved a very important victory. Managing the empire had become one of my main activities. I mean, after all, it's my job, okay, I'm the emperor, I get it. <laughs> but the time I have to invest in managing the empire drastically increased. That's what I want to say. I saw no need for further invasions into Spain or Gaul right now, as they were under control of several Roman families and seen as allies, at least at the moment. And it was during this time that I single-handedly brought the Empire to the brink of a crisis. But more on that soon. I managed to reclaim the Bosporus Kingdom after I had successfully converted all the regions to my culture. Next followed an invasion into Arabia. And like many emperors before, Job died during the war. Man, this country is cursed. For real. But unlike the others, he plunged the whole empire into a massive civil war. Bro, you had one job, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, two emperors existed, both claiming to be the true successor of the empire. But it wasn't over yet, as worse was to come. As another civil war threatened to steal me the last pieces of my shattered empire. So I managed to ally with the Gubater Empire. And together we slowly brought the civil war under control. Fighting many battles, I managed to win a decisive victory in southern Italy. And as a result, winning the 14 year old, winning the 14 year long civil war. But the conflict with my brother in Italy still hadn't made any progress at all. And our relations also didn't improve as I realized that Italy had freed the majority of Africa and Arabia. Basically, all the lands that our ancestors fought for so hard were freed once again. The Roman dream shattered. Everything was about to be lost. So now it was up to me to save what was left. Italy also destroyed the Bosporus Kingdom, which had just been re-established. A true shame. So I started my reconquest, reconquering the smaller counties Italy had freed. And while some nations rejoined voluntarily, others fought even harder for their newly gained freedom. But all these lands need order. Order Rome and only Rome can give them. Especially the Eastern Kingdoms were strong and the wars there were rough and surpassed generations. But after several years, we finally shared a border with the Gubater Empire again. And luckily, they struggled with other problems at the moment. So there were no threat. I mean, no threat right now. And so, as the situation seemed to improve, the next disaster knocked at my door. Oh my god! Can... <laughs> 
I allied with the Gubater Empire once again and helped them to beat their civil war. Then I marched on the last hairs of the Islamic invasion and got absolutely destroyed. Oh, hell no! So the Gubater Empire joined the war and saved the day. What really annoyed me was that I had lost all claims to the Bosporus Kingdom. And regaining them was a slow and painful task. But it had to be done. And while reclaiming my parts of the Bosporus Kingdom, the first parts of Spain were conquered. Which the Senate must have been very happy about. So I moved on to face the main problem of the whole situation. And I waged a war to reconquer Italy itself. And I don't even want to know how often I already had to reconquer the Eternal City, honestly. It would be too painful to know exactly. Many battles followed. First we could free the North. And now that the North had surrendered, the last cities and also Rome itself were freed from the Roman traitors. With Italy back in my hands, it felt like the worst part was over. And God was I wrong. I made sure that the Senate was loyal. I mean, okay, to call this a Senate is still putting it very nicely. I mean, <laughs> there are zero to one people in the other political parties, so yeah, I don't know about that one. I had almost lost all former territories in Arabia, and so I decided that it was time to reconquer them. As always, during a campaign in Arabia, the Emperor had to die, of course. That's simply a part of it by now. I was almost winning the war, but then I was betrayed. Emotional I thought we were friends. What the hell? I finished Arabia and prepared for the Gubadian invasion. Is that even a word? I don't know. I started invading their land and rapidly made good progress, but lost the first major show off. But I kept going. And so I managed to win the war over time. Also, because the Gubater Empire had a major problem, I just knew too well. <laughs> it was time to reintegrate Illyria back into the Empire. And after a quick war, Illyria was freed. And Roman, once again. I made sure that the province was governed by a Greco-Roman, so that the locals could feel safe and secured. Now that Italy was reconquered, I could reclaim the Italian Empire title and immediately destroyed it as it is too dangerous to be left alive. In addition, I made sure that each province had a good and most importantly a loyal governor. The empire was stable for the first time in a long time and so the years passed and it was time for revenge. The Gubater Empire was still unstable and it was led by a young boy. So this was my time to strike. In their weakened state, the Gubata Empire was no match for me at all and easily defeated. So take this L back. And with this victory, the crisis was officially over. And only we, the true Romans, now stand while our enemies lie dead and rot. With all old problems out of the way, it was now time for my final plan. My ultimate plan was to create a dynasty of many crowns to make the Roman family Lyon immortal. And because I never had that achievement before. So after conquering something, I now put it under Roman command of a Roman family member of mine and granted them independence. And between the big wars, I had to take breaks. And so I conquered the last remaining pieces of the civil war against Italy which were still independent. I just wanted to mention how disappointed I am from the Gubater Empire. Instead of conquering this last piece of land and forming India, they just refused to do so. Why? I, I literally don't get it. Why? Please, locals, explain it to me. Everything was going well. So I decided to push my luck and continued attacking Arabia. Until now, someone had always died or something else happened but I felt safe at least until I was disfigured Bruh. and Gubater attacked me. Thanks. The Gubater Empire was clearly superior and 
So I decided to just give them what they wanted and in this case it was just some random artifacts and yeah, nothing really to cry about. As this war would be difficult to win and furthermore I just didn't care for the artifacts, like honestly. I had more important things to do, for example, to establish a new independent Roman ruler in Africa and not just Africa. I also plan to establish Roman friendly kingdoms in Europe. Over time I could establish more and more Roman kingdoms in Africa and Europe and came closer to my goal. Further conquests in Spain followed and slowly but surely the whole island came under Roman control. I managed to vassalize a lot of former kingdoms around the Bosporus and so the reintegration of this territory was almost done. But I wasn't the only empire that had overcome its crisis. The Gubader Empire was spreading dangerously fast. Although that's probably the wrong direction, I mean, <laughs> eh, Mongols. I almost had all the kingdoms together that I needed. And in addition, my army got stronger through many military reforms. With the death of the emperor and a new military, I challenged my luck again by attacking the remaining pieces of Arabia. This region is cursed, honestly. Every time I have attacked, something bad has happened so far. But this time it went well, until my game crashed. Luckily, my progress was saved and it could not become worse. I mean, at least he won his war. The war against Arabia was also won. And I was satisfied with the current size of the empire. With more fortifications built in the east, we would be able to keep the Gubarra Empire at bar. Now it was a matter of conquering Europe and establishing many Roman kingdoms. My problem was that I regained the independent kingdoms through inheritance and some of them became my vassals and were playing an England campaign, like honestly. Why are they colonizing everything? God damn, we're an empire, we're structured, we are Romans, not... What the hell are you doing there? It forced me to conquer more kingdoms and that was really exhausting. But after I had subjugated almost all of Gaul, the time had finally come. This was all that was missing. A worthy conclusion to demonstrate Rome's strength. While the world was dominated by the Greek language and the empire by the Romano-Greek culture. Finally, I had conquered all of Spain and made sure that the borders were beautiful. Ending this campaign with the unification of the Eastern Roman Empire and the Macedonian Empire under Alexander's command. 